2022 is an interesting year for the collective. I'm really, really excited to see what happens. It will definitely have some more highs, but as every year it comes with some low lows, especially when you're in the midst of a pandemic and a lot of shady corruption and shit. This may be a little bit of a controversial video, so I'm just letting you know ahead of time. What is up, my fellow spiritual badasses on the internet, my bad spiritual mamajamas out there? What is up? I hope you guys are doing well and just cruising your way into 2022 so far. Make this your year, okay? Don't let me or anybody else predict your year for you. Like, yes, I do predictions and shit that kind of goes against what I do over here, but don't let that deter you from making this year your bitch <laughs> in the most spiritual way possible. We are spiritual, but that does not mean that we have to be all love, light, twin flames, and unicorns. We have to kiss everyone's ass and just take shit, okay? Because that is not the case. Do things that you didn't think you could freaking do. The thing that you've been scared of, the thing that you've been putting off, the thing that you've just been thinking that you're not capable of or that's not possible for you, it is possible on a year like this, okay? Let me tell you. All right, so basically, what is this video about? I haven't even said that yet. Wow. <laughs> this video is is what is coming in 2022 my predictions for the collective we can all see these themes whether in our lives or in the world or in other people's lives or whatever on the news if you still watch the news if you haven't seen my new age video where i go over the big picture of what's happening over the next decade and even further, like likely the next century or so because of the big cycle that we just entered into. Definitely go watch that because some of my predictions in this video will align with some of them in that video. And a lot of them in that video have already been happening. We can already see how that's starting. So definitely go watch that video if you haven't seen that one. Also, before we get started, let me remind you that the 2022 horoscopes for your year ahead are up. The timestamps are on it so you can skip right to the signs that you want to listen to. Really happy that video is doing really well. You guys really are supporting it and I really, really am thankful for it. So if you want to figure out how these transits and how all this shit happening this year is gonna affect you personally, I do do personal readings. If you would like to get a 2022 year ahead reading, you can check that out on my website below. If you would like to get exclusive content with me and other fun stuff that I do, uncensored, unfiltered astro content where we can like talk about controversial shit and not be censored and all of that, make sure to follow my Patreon below. You can literally start getting stuff for just $5 a month. You can cancel at any time. I never plug my shit, so I just wanted to plug my shit because I usually always forget. I'm just bad at doing that. Like it just feels weird to me. <laughs> I, I do literally live off other things too, so it's important for me to do that, you know? So anyways, grab yourself a drink, man. Grab yourself a, a crystal, a vape, if you're a horrible vapor like me. Just grab whatever the fuck and get comfortable and let's talk about 2022 because it's gonna be wild, man. It's gonna be, I'm so excited for it if you can't tell. Timestamps will be linked down below. If you wanna skip around or if you wanna ever come back to this video and skip to a certain part where I talked about something. Again, this is the collective astrology, so this is not like for your sign personally. I already did that. But I will be talking at the end uh, about some of the signs that may experience like the most growth or the most financial focused or whatever, you know, like stuff like that. I will be talking about that at the end. Let's go ahead and finally get into it. So let's start off the 2022 predictions with the good shit, okay? Which is Jupiter is in mother effing Pisces. Finally, it moved in right at the very, very end of 2021. So it is already in Pisces. It is spending the first five months of 2022 in Pisces until May. It will spend from January to May 2022 in Pisces and then like a little bit of October, November, and December in Pisces. This is really exciting. Why? Because Jupiter and ancient astrology astrology rules Pisces and I use tropical Hellenistic astrology, traditional astrology. I used to do like more modern astrology, but I don't anymore. I've cut that out because I've realized that the ancients had something going on, you know, like they knew what the fuck was up. Jupiter is the traditional ruler of Pisces. And I think we can see that ever since Jupiter has moved into Pisces, there has been 
a breath of fresh air. There is some kind of like hope or optimism that has filled us all. Something else that I think is really interesting is like 2022 is a six year and in numerology six rules over healing. A lot of actually like Piscean, Jupiter and Pisces things and so I thought that was like really interesting. It's a very social number and it also deals with like healing and service to others. The downside of that can be self-sacrifice and martyrdom so we can see some of that too. But the best metaphor that I have for Jupiter and Pisces, okay, are you ready? Jupiter and Pisces is like, and this is just a metaphor, okay, I'm not saying Jupiter was in Pisces when this happened because it was not, but like when the pandemic first started and there were all these like, all these powerful people, influential people, some of them were the ones like actually enforcing these rules and mandates and making these restrictions are all caught out partying no protection no distancing like nothing right people were like pissed right like people were like what the actual f like you are literally telling us what to do but you're not even following this like that is basically what I see for 2022. It's like people are just going to either stop caring, they're going to be over it, and we can already start seeing this happen. And this is something that I've said now for months anyway, but still we can already see a lot of this happening. People are going to be over it. People are going to want to unify. People are going to want to come together. Pisces and Jupiter is about freedom, unifying and transcending duality, transcending fear and fear-related narratives. It's going to be like one big influencer party not caring what other people say about it. So I do think like as as far as like a lot of the restrictions and mandates will lighten up, but I think that something else is coming. I'm not sure if it will be related to the pandemic or not. I kind of feel like it will be more related to a financial crisis or economic crisis like I've been saying for a while. Jupiter and Pisces is also the time of the outcast, the underdog. Pisces is a sign of those people that have been kind of pushed out of society, the healers, the weirdos, the black sheep, the underdogs, the the people that are made fun of Pisces is a very charitable sign and it's a very connected sign. It can see the connection of everything, how everything's interconnected. I, I do think that this will be a time of the underdog and the outcast. And what also tells me that is Saturn and Aquarius still this year, which I'll get to in a little bit. I talked about the 1960s in my new age video. And this was the last time that we had Saturn and Aquarius and Jupiter and then Jupiter moved into Pisces. That's why I think we will be seeing similar themes coming back from that time period. So definitely be on the lookout for similar themes. And that time period was also the massive start of the hippie movement. I think with the North Node being in Taurus in 2022, which we'll also talk about in this video, also Jupiter and Pisces, there will be a lot of movements of getting back to nature, holistic healing, and enjoying Mother Earth and finding the pleasure in things and finding the spirituality and everything and how everything is interconnected, like I said before. So the last time that Jupiter was in Pisces, just in general, was in 2010. And this was from mid-January to June 2010, and then also from, from mid-September 2010 to February 2011. So if you want to think back to your life and what was happening for you or what was happening in the world, that may give us some clues as to what we may see this time with Jupiter and Pisces, or just at least similar themes that we could see. At that time, we had an ongoing financial cri crisis and recession. We had high unemployment rates. We had house prices that were still depressed due to a lot of the foreclosures in the U.S. The U.S. was trying to spend its way out of a recession by creating more jobs. We also had like a ton of natural disasters related to water, like floods, hurricanes, etc. There was also the health care reform going on around that time in the U.S. for the Affordable Care Act and the mandates in health care. We had the Affordable Care Act lawsuit suits. So 25 states ended up suing the federal government over those mandates. There was just a ton of debates within the healthcare industry. And I think that we'll see sim something similar now because Pisces can rule healthcare in a certain way, more like holistic health and different weird remedies like health remedies or health practices. We saw a lot of malpractice be exposed in healthcare. There were like a lot of Disney and Pixar movies released, which really relates with Pisces. It's a very creative sign. And so we can see a lot of fairy tale like energy there. And there were a lot of art scandals as well. So some things that I personally think we could see with Jupiter and Pisces is a lot of a lot more travel. So travel being able to be opened up, not as strict guidelines or restrictions on 
travel and travel bans and all of that, restrictions not being as heavy, or at the very least, people just not caring anymore. I think that with Jupiter and Pisces, the first uh, five months, things can manifest a lot easier. If you are into any kind of spiritual practice or manifestation, this can be a time where you can manifest a lot more. You can see your potential a lot easier. I also unfortunately think that a drug epidemic, either the drug epidemic or a new drug epidemic, will likely become very, very big or even like an alcohol issue problem just because Pisces rules escapism on the shadow side. And so we do want to watch out for that. We could also see homelessness, but also more unity, more charity, more of a compassion going towards people that don't have enough or that are struggling or that are underdogs in some way. I also think that instead of freaking out and all this fear and chaos that we've seen over the last two years, over this pandemic and stuff, there may be a lot more healing in the sense of, okay, what does this actually mean on a higher level? What is this situation, this pandemic, whatever, this virus trying to tell us? Do we need to find a way to become one, which is a very Piscean uh, thing with this? You know, do we f need to find a way to let go and like accept this and stop trying to fight it because nothing that we're doing has worked. And so at the end of the day, what is all of this trying to tell us and what is it trying to show us? I think there will be more connectedness between divisions of people uh, and diversity. I also think that there could be like a forgetting or ignoring world issues or what's going on in the world and like this illusion of like, oh, we're gonna get back to normal, it's gonna be okay, and only wanting to kind of focus on like the positive. But the po problem is, is that the darkness, corruption, fear, issues, and trauma that we've experienced or that have been brought to the surface or exposed through this whole situation the last couple years is still there and we can't ignore it. And so it will come back around in some way or another. And that's why I'm saying this isn't over yet, you guys. Like this is not just like, okay, yeah, now we're getting back to normal. I don't think there's any getting back to normal after this. This whole situation has exposed so many issues within the people in power, the elite, our government. It's caused a lot of division, trauma, and fear and anxiety in people, you know, that we haven't even gotten a chance to like stop and reflect on or think about or process or anything because it's just been one thing after another. I think with Jupiter and Pisces, this will be a lot more about integration with reality instead of just coping. Not to say that you can't just cope, that you can't resist reality because you still will be able to, but to actually heal and to actually move forward in life if you are still holding on or still resisting reality or still just coping and not actually healing or integrating, then this transit may actually bring that up. That's like, hey, I need to I need to heal. You know, you need to like heal with all of this stress, all of the changes, all of the trauma that has come up, you know, and stop just like ignoring it. That's the thing, like no one really talks about all the stress, trauma, and, and shit that's been caused over the last couple years with everything that we've been through. And so because of that, our emotional well-being will become more important and more of a focus. And toxic coping me mechanisms and toxic situations will be very, very apparent. I think the effects of like the last couple years and all the trauma that has been caused will be more apparent to people and people will start to realize things are not going back to normal and that also, holy shit, like there's some emotional shit that we need to work out here. The ways in which we cope, whether healthy or unhealthy, will definitely be coming to the surface. What's going on in our internal realm, our internal being, right? How we're doing spiritually, how we're doing internally, emotionally will be a lot more of a focus. Mental health and behavioral health. And because of that, spirituality is going to become huge, right? Like, because that is one of the things that Pisces rules. So the spirituality genre is going to become huge. Yoga, just so many different forms of healing will be a major focus starting in 2022. But I do also think that with that will come certain people that want to take advantage of that, take advantage of other people. So people that are scammers or people that are shady, etc. So we do have to watch out for that. And also I think, you know, with Jupiter and Pisces, a water sign that deals with emotion and then the south node being in a water sign. I think this is definitely going to bring up how in today's world, our emotions are, are not dealt with in a healthy or proper way at all. It's all about repression or using something else to repress or 
basically deflecting and projecting projection and blaming other people, denial, or playing the victim and expecting others to kind of been to our every sensitivity that's not realistic you know what i mean like it's normal to be triggered but we can't expect the world to change the way it is just because we are triggered we have to go inward and figure out why we're giving our power away what the trigger is where it came from and how to integrate with that and find a way to be okay with it to heal that trauma that is getting triggered by whatever situation and then that situation or people that do those things or say those things, whatever the trigger is, won't bother us because it's not something that we give power anymore. That is how you heal. Deal with emotions and feel your feelings. It's time to actually heal. You know, none of that other shit is helping us. It's just making us more divided. It's causing people to not be authentic to themselves because they're scared they're gonna trigger someone or hurt someone else's feelings or whatever. People think that to deal with feelings, we have to cater to everybody's whim and need and sensitivity, and that's not the case. You're responsible for your own feelings. No one else is. Yes, people can be shit people and do traumatic things to you, and I'm not saying that that's all on you, but it's you how you heal. It's on you with how you heal from it, unfortunately. You know, I've had really fucked up, crazy shit happen to me. I've been abused. I've been all of those things, you know, and I've had to learn how to heal myself and stop blaming other people and also stop blaming myself because my big one was blaming myself. So it's not necessarily about victim blaming either. It's just like it is your responsibility to heal them. No one else can like factually get inside of you and heal you besides you. No one else can force you to feel those things besides you. And by doing that, you actually end up with empowerment. You actually end up truly healing and not just putting it off till later or expecting someone else and their actions actions to be the solution to your issue because that's giving your power away right basically how to deal with your own emotions in a healthy way is going to be very very big because no one else can do it for you but you so that is jupiter in pisces so now let's talk about jupiter and aries Jupiter is going to move into Aries from May to October 2022. That is going to bring a massive, massive shift, okay? It's kind of short what I have for Jupiter and Aries because I'll be honest, it's something that I'm still kind of thinking of different things and, and I want to go back and look at past Jupiter and Aries transits, but Aries is a fire sign. So like we likely we are going to see things involving fire. Things will, will be a little bit more confrontational, but what I really like about Jupiter and Aries is like the metaphor I get for this is like a man yelling at the top of a mountain. <laughs> it is the time of masculine energy. Aries is a super masculine sign. And so this is going to be a time of really getting back in touch with who we are, our masculinity, our masculine energy, also getting in touch with our identity and our individuality. But when Jupiter's in Pisces, we're kind of imagining like this new world for ourselves or these new visions for ourselves. And then when Jupiter moves into Aries, it's a time of really initiating those things. Also with Jupiter and Pisces, we're not only reimagining, but we're like letting go of the things that need to be let go of. We're healing, we're accepting, we're moving on. When Jupiter moves into Aries from May to October, we are moving on. We are initiating new things. We are moving forward. It's going to be like go time, baby. And then once Jupiter moves back into Pisces, uh, when it retrogrades, from October to December, that is gonna be a time of reimagining. That's gonna be a time of making sure that we let go of everything that we needed to before Jupiter moves back into Aries at the very end of this year and will be in Aries uh, somewhat of next year as well, where we start catching momentum. Instead of it being so focused on the collective and the group and how we affect the collective and how the collective affects us, like it's gonna be a lot more focused on the individual, the self, and our own identity, our own individuality. So although Jupiter and Aries can bring up a lot of fire and like possibly the topic of like guns or explosives or natural fires or confrontation, conflicts, fighters, boxers, you know, stuff like that, I think that it could also be very great for us in, in a way where we're initiating more, we're taking action more, we're standing up for ourselves more, we're more forward focused, and we're not just kind of lost, you know, it really kind of gets more direct. 
So next I want to talk about Saturn in Aquarius because it's already been in Aquarius. It was in Aquarius in 2021. I talked a lot about Saturn in Aquarius in my new age video as well, but I wanted to touch on some other stuff that I've learned since then and that I think uh, will be affecting us this year very much so. So it's so funny because a lot of people think Aquarius is like this love and light sign, like we're transcending to the 5D, the collective consciousness and like this hipster hippie like cool rebel type of sign oh and people always brag about how it's the outcast and like this that and the other but if you really think about it like who the outcasts are these days the people that are going against the grain going against the system going against the the herd the people that are being silenced the people that are being threatened with their jobs or you know their rights or whatever the case may be and I'm not here to argue political sides because I'm not on any political side but I definitely appreciate freedom that's a very big deal to me personally and I've said that before so Everyone loves to say Aquarius is the outcast and thinks Aquarius is such a cool sign and how much they relate to Aquarius, but we've been seeing Aquarius playing out quite literally, right? We've been seeing the outcast. Saturn draws a line in Aquarius and says, this is where you can go, this is where you can't go. And the people that go, even though they're told not to, that's Aquarius, but Aquarius can also be the people that don't go, the people that follow the rules, the people that don't march to the beat of their own drum, the people that get caught up in what's good for everybody and in a one size fits all kind of mindset and misses what's actually good for the individual person or doesn't think about the individual person or how, that, how their idea may not be true for everybody else. So that can be kind of the shadow side of Aquarius and we've been seeing that a lot right we've been seeing kind of these large groups of people or movements of people that kind of go for this one-size-fits-all or are following the narrative or following the rules etc and then we've seen these other people that if they question the narrative boom they're freaking outcasted you can't sit with us kind of shit right or canceled ridiculed called a bunch of names labeled and put inside of a box when in most cases like I know for me I don't fit inside one box you know what I mean I don't attach myself to some fucking label and say, yeah, I'm that, you know what I mean? Like at least most of the time I don't. And you can't do that to people because people are complex. People have different reasons for what they believe or what they're passionate about, or, you know, they may think they may agree with one thing and also agree with the opposite at the same time, like it in holds space for polarity. It's not always like, oh, you don't think like me. So you're the bad label, the bad guy, whatever you want to use to throw people into the box, whether it is, oh, you're, you must be a Trump supporter, or you must be a liberal, or you must be a Democrat, or you must be anti-V, you know, like all of these different labels that have came up to place people, like a certain clique or group of people, when people are so fucking much more than that. And I say this as someone with an Aquarian moon and Saturn in fucking Aquarius as well, which we have right now. Saturn and Aquarius is like making us take a good hard look at this. Who are are we boxing in or who are we labeling who are we kind of just sweeping under the rug or outcasting because they don't share our beliefs or how is that being done to us Saturn builds a wall and splits society like I said it really brings up societal issues minority groups and just different groups of people that are kind of on the outskirts of society that don't quite fit in or it brings up situations that draw the line that push people to the outskirts of society that push people to kind of be the black sheep Aquarius is not a love and light sign you know we're not this is not about ascending to the 5d and like all oh, we're gonna be in harmony like Saturn is a malefic fucking planet and it is the traditional ruler of Aquarius but it is the coldest sign it is the darkest sign why because when the Sun is in Aquarius it is farthest away from its home Aquarius is the farthest sign from the light so is Capricorn kind of, but Aquarius is when it gets the coldest. It is fixed air, right? And here in the Northern Hemisphere it is the time when things are cold. It is steady, fixed, cold weather, and it's icy cold, like all the way down to your bones, you know? And the sun is at its lowest point. It's like most dimmest point. It's not as bright. Aquarius is darker than Scorpio. <laughs> it, it really is. So yeah, I think that with Saturn and Aquarius, we're going to continue to see these group issues, these social issues, these technological issues, censorship, 
and just restrictions trying to be placed on people, trying to get people to conform, trying to box people in, whether it's by the media, people in power, or by other people. You know, like the the with Saturn and Aquarius, it's like people are turning on their fellow humans, right? The ordinary person is turning on their fellow ordinary people, right? How is this being driven? By the media, also somewhat ruled by Aquarius because Aquarius rules technology. It's an air sign, it's a mental sign, right? Rules over science. <laughs> These kind of restrictive measures taken over science or over a certain train of thought or a certain way of thinking that kind of says, oh, everybody must think like this or else you're not you're not, you know, part of the part of the good side or whatever the case may be. It's like everyone's worried about everyone else. Everyone's trying to do what they think is good for everybody else instead of what's actually what actually may be good for everybody else. I think that it's really possible that we could see a lot going on in terms of technology and the power grid and power supply issues, cyber attacks, like hacking, you know, like all of that stuff this year because Saturn is on its own in Aquarius, left to its own devices. Now, I do kind of like this better though than Jupiter being in there because Jupiter just expanded Saturn's wrath, honestly. There will still be people trying to control people, basically, to some extent, in some way with some narrative. And with the US, Aquarius is the US's third house where Saturn is and the third house rules over media and our local environment and just kind of controlling the narrative of the people, controlling the minds of the people. But I do believe that Jupiter and Pisces is like waking a lot, waking up a lot of people, which is really cool. Okay, so this is one of the biggest things that I think that we're gonna see, some of my biggest predictions, okay? are here. <laughs> the nodes are moving into Scorpio and Taurus, okay? The north node will be in Taurus, the south node will be in Scorpio. The nodes tell us where the eclipses will be for an 18-month period, and so that's why this is important, because it's bringing up what these eclipses are going to be about, what the karmic, faded energy of the next 18 months is going to be about, where we're kind of decreasing with the south node or where we're working on some kind of karmic lessons or like shadow lessons versus where we want to get to or where we like feel that we need to get to. Easy way to describe these two, Taurus is pleasure, Scorpio is pain. Taurus is abundance, Scorpio is lack. Taurus is simplicity, Scorpio is complexity. Taurus is security, Scorpio is insecurity. So we are going to see these themes on a collective scale. These are fixed signs, which means they don't change easily, they're not as adaptable, it's not gonna be a constantly shifting fucking narrative of like, oh, it's this, or no, oh, it's this. Like it's been with the nodes in Gemini and Sag. They're harder to change, they're stubborn, they're not gonna change unless they see the point of it, you know what I mean? Let's go over some other more in-depth keywords for these signs because this is how we can draw interpretations and predictions from them. So the south node is in the Earth's shadow, so it's kind of like the Earth's shadow, the collective shadow, uh, the shadow that's kind of wreaking havoc over all of us, and we've really seen that the last year with the south node being in Sag, well really the last year and a half, having these like very strong belief systems and only being able to believe in one way or believe in one way of thinking or believe in one thing, politics, worldviews, like just our belief systems have changed rapidly in some form or another over the last year and a half. So let's start with the south node in Scorpio. History also shows higher crime rates with the south node in Scorpio, scarcity, lack, possibly a rise in poverty, emotional drama, extreme emotions, psychology. Scorpio can also be our relationship with fear, death, power, uh, toxicity, emotional attachments, emotional purging, insecurities, feeding off chaos, corruption, complexity, scandal, toxins. Being attached to the chaos is, I think, a, a big thing that's going to come up, like toxic attachments that we have to chaotic situations are suffering like in this endless cycle. Scorpio can also rule sexuality, destructive or constant catharsis, like feeling like we constantly need to be going through this cathartic state. Power struggles, feeling scandalous, getting trapped in our attachments to toxicity, decay. Scorpio is also very edgy and can rule like things that torture us, like where we feel tortured, whether internally with our emotions, 
etc. It really rules over the more intense emotional realms where we feel like tortured souls or everything's just happening to us. Jealousy, possessiveness, obsessions, paranoia, stinginess, fear that leads to collateral damage or liabilities, debt crisis. And then Taurus is like the opposite, right? Because the, the nodes are always opposite each other in opposite signs. And so Taurus is about growth, simplicity, stability, security, beauty, our relationship to the material realm, earthly pleasures, consistency, money, and things of value, earthly and natural resources, earthly priorities, our lifestyles, lifestyle DIYs, food, material comforts, what you own, your assets, you know, what's sustainable. The last time that the nodes were in, uh, the north node was in Taurus and the south node was in Scorpio, which I believe was like 2004, like 2003 to 2004, Martha Stewart. So it was when Martha Stewart, who was like a, the perfect Taurus figure, right? Like, I don't know, I don't know her chart exactly, but she's like the perfect Taurus figure because she did like food and lifestyle shit. You know what I mean? Like it's just perfect for Taurus shit. She ended up going through some shady shit, like some kind of, she got arrested for some kind of crime or financial crime, which is so literal to like a way that this axis can play out, right? Like, cause she's the perfect Taurus figure. Both can kind of somewhat have a connection to money, especially Taurus. Scorpio is more like our emotional attachments to things, like where we don't want to let go or where we end up having to let go through some kind of situation. So we experience lack and fear and all of that. And also like, Scorpio can rule crime and shady behaviors because of our deep intense desires and emotions. Uh, I just thought that was funny because it just seemed very like literal to the nodal axis. Anyway, so something else that's really interesting to me is that Uranus is in Taurus. And so the North Node will be coming across Uranus eventually, which is crazy because Uranus is about breaking free and individuality and independence and emancipation, innovation and inventions. So here's some ways that I think that we could see this playing out. Basically, I think that the North Node in Taurus is like, yo, we need to break free of this complex shit. I'm sick of all the death, loss, decay, lack, like torture, the endless cycle of being in debt or the endless cycle of being in fear and security over money. I am ready to gather my own resources, have my own material needs, break free of this fear-based system that fucking sucks, right? That like does not, is not good for like the ordinary person at all, especially like financially. It's like so complex and they make it that way for a reason. I'm ready for financial independence, right? To live a more simpler, sustainable life, something that feels more simple, something that feels more comfortable and is not putting me in this constant cycle of feeling tortured or feeling lack or feeling insecurity or stability. Now, don't get me wrong, the South Node in Scorpio will have its own things that we can work through and heal, like its own positive, you could say, traits, right? Like we can heal a lot. We can get very comfortable with the parts of us that we shut away or that are in our shadows, or we can overcome our fears and learn how to heal a lot of our insecurities and fears. And so it's gonna be great for that. It's gonna be great for like really getting deep, going deep within ourselves to discover certain things and to heal certain things and to let go of certain things and to purge and detox certain things, which Scorpio also has to do with. But we're all going to be like the collectively humanity is going to be trying to get to this point of this North Node in Taurus with Uranus there of independent financial freedom, independent financial simplicity or material simplicity. So I think that we could see a lot of people getting into like minimalism or minimizing the tiny house move it movement is like the perfect movement with this with Uranus and Taurus because it got really big since Uranus has moved into Taurus which was a few years back but that is perfect because it's eccentric it's unique and different you know what I mean it does different shit and so it's kind of like living off grid living off the system you know, in a tiny house, like sustaining your own life. Like they had the fucking right idea, all those people that were doing that before shit got crazy. Anyways, but we're gonna wanna have our own resources and be independent of like some kind of 
complex, fear-based, debt-based shit, right? That keeps us in po poverty. We're gonna want more simplicity. Simplicity brings more liberation to our lives, more of a sense of freedom. We may see like the progression of money, upgrade of natural resources or how to get natural resources. And like I said, I think that this is really, I think that the nodal axis is also very much about a balance, like finding beauty in the dark would be a way to balance these two. Finding how the dark can, the darkness of Scorpio can be beautiful, how chaos like can have a certain sense of beauty, how to heal and embrace the dark and basically integrate it and transcend it, which leads to beauty and a sense of internal security. I also think that with Uranus and Taurus, we could see definitely a lot of disruptions in the economy and in resources, supply chains, etc., which we've already kind of been seeing. I definitely think that's going to continue and kind of like the talk about where we're going with money, how we're progressing, like what's next is something that's that's really talked about in 2022. Also, having land, having your own land, your own resources, is also going to be a really big deal here. Uh, instead of being emotionally manipulated by some kind of corrupt, chaotic system, basically staying a slave to a system or handing your power away, like being in some kind of power struggle to have the resources that you need. Disputes or rebellion regarding industries, land, money, resources, value, ownership, rights, I think is also, we definitely could also see ownership rights becoming like a big topic or a theme. Like what's a value? What's a value definitely may change. Taurus also rules over farming uh, because that's deals with our resources. So we could see something going on there that's kind of rebellious, confrontational, or that's a, a progression in some way, at least, or an upgrade. Also, another way to view this is kind of like the natural versus the unnatural, I think, as well. Like, how far away from the natural realm or natural resources do we want to get? I think that's going to be a big topic. And I also think what's going to be a big topic is like, the chemicals and the shit that they put into our quote unquote natural resources. That is gonna be huge because Scorpio rules toxic chemicals and toxins and shit like that. Taurus rules <laughs> our food and resources and stuff like that. So that's gonna, I'm, I, I will, I put money that that is gonna come up. Radical changes in the economy, natural resources and what we value, like I already said, Achieving freedom in the form of material sovereignty or independence, major changes in wealth. I mean, everybody is going to be like really wanting to upgrade in terms of materially. And also, I think major changes in those that are wealthy. Movements surrounding topics of resources, land, money, food, farms, ownership property, value, rights, etc. Growing, a lot of people I think are gonna grow their own food and do things independently, do things themselves. The progression of natural resources like food uh, that could have toxic effects and what those effects could be. Toxic chemicals that are, that are affecting our natural resources. The sickness that beauty and comfort can cause. The more natural and simple, the better. More of like a focus on our earth and envir environment. Um, and environmental issues and how that affects our resources. Focus on food and health issues and how they're connected, especially in the U.S. because Taurus is the U.S.'s sixth house of health and work. I think that that's going to be pretty big. Like I said, unfortunately, I think that like one thing that we could see is definitely an increase in poverty, unfortunately, with this, an increase in crime an increase in people just getting too caught up in power struggles or depending on a system that is just too chaotic, too complex, just too corrupt. And so, like I said, that, that goal, that North Node in Taurus, especially with Uranus there, is definitely gonna be pushing people towards wanting things that are more simple, wanting things that actually have value to them, that, that not just money can buy, right? Like things that are sustainable, like people are gonna be thinking like long-term, where is this headed? I wanna have my own land. I don't want anybody to be able to take it from me. Like I wanna have my own resources. I don't want anybody to be able to take that from me. Like it's gonna get really, people are gonna want independence in terms of their finances and in terms of their resources. Something else because Scorpio, rules over the genitals so it does kind of have this relation to sex and sexuality and something that we've seen with past like big scorpio transits is a theme of bringing up sexual diseases and just 
like the topic of sex in general, the sex industry, making money through sex. Some of that may also become like a big topic. Only fans, like, you know, just these different types of things, porn, some of this may become more of a bigger topic in some way. We could also see like sexual crimes or sexual harassment also becoming pretty big. But yeah, so those are the predictions I have for the nodes in Taurus and Scorpio. Definitely a different vibe than Gemini and Sag, which has been like just information chaos, just constant narrative shifts, constantly questioning your belief systems and changing your belief systems and, you know, looking at like facts and this, that, and the other. And so this is definitely, I think, a nice change from that. It does have, every nodal axis will have some challenges, right? But um, I think for the most part, many people are going to wake up to the system and the corruption within the economy and the financial system and banks and resources. People are definitely going to be moving towards more independence and more liberation in terms of those things rather than just continually being emotionally triggered and being manipulated to certain power dynamics in the financial world. It will be more about owning independent property, independent assets, and that we could see some like really big changes in the stock market that will come to the surface and we may see a lot of issues when it comes to that. It doesn't mean that it's all going to be bad because it's not, it's going to be more about independence and like independent wealth and resources, financial independence, material independence, owning your own shit. So <laughs> the last big thing that I want to talk about this year is the U.S.'s Pluto return. This, it starts this year. The first hit is February 20th, 2022. That's the exact hit. The second hit is in July 2022, the third hit is in December 2022, and then the last and final hit will be in October 2023. Anytime a nation goes through a Pluto return, it's a make or break time, you know? It can definitely be destruction of the old ways of that nation or civilization, etc. It, it's definitely a make or break time, you know, a sink or float kind of time, but this is in the U.S.'s second house of money, resources, finance. So first case, there could be just like a total overhaul the best case there could be some kind of upgrade also like the worst case there could be some kind of like destruction loss change and a lot of like social and political issues in the u.s's second house of assets finances banks wealth financial institutions pluto return guarantees to unveil massive deep corruption within a system a nation Etc. And you know, we're kind of already starting to see that, right? Like we've, well, we've been kind of starting to see that for a couple of years now. So it's kind of like a time of like, do you want to open your eyes and see how deep this goes and how far it roots back? Or do you want to keep your eyes closed? Because Pluto is bringing it to the surface, you know? Pluto, I think also will bring some kind of like, I, I think that this could also be some kind of like cyber attack on our economy or our financial systems in some way because the ruler of this Pluto return is Saturn since it's happening in Capricorn um, and Saturn's in Aquarius which is very digital and technological and you know cyber. <laughs> I think that that like some kind of mixing with the two could definitely happen and I think this is also why we're seeing things like cryptocurrency and stuff. Now I'm like doing research on all that so I don't want to like recommend anything or say for sure what I think about that just yet. Definitely could see things possibly taking a digital turn, but I don't know how long it will be unregulated for, basically. So that's something that I would need to study a little bit more, to be honest. We could also see this affecting the power grid or power in general, being a shortage of resources, poverty, supply chain shortages, a lot of the same, it's kind of similar to the South Node in Scorpio in a lot of ways and what I was kind of getting for that collective fear and powerlessness and a lot of this stuff we've already been seeing because just because it's not been exact, it's been pretty freaking close for quite a few years now. So major changes to the old, you know, structures that hold our society together or that govern our world, foundational, economical, and structural changes to those things, wealth, uh, wealth transfer or transfers of power, power struggles, who's in power, 
who's controlling things and where do things need to basically be destroyed or end, you know, come to an end with those things. Corruption in those that are in power, corruption in governments, authorities, and big cor corporations, businesses, big industries, and corruption in the wealthy or the elite. Like Pluto literally rules all of these things. Structures, monuments, and historical things that have stood the test of time coming down or being destroyed. Rethinking consumerism or even capitalism, which we see a lot of people doing already. But the foundations and rules of the system, right, are gonna are really coming into question. Economical uh, and job crisis, possibly like a, a pretty big change in like the constitution or the foundations that our country is built off of in some way. Clash between the digital world and the natural world authoritarianism, totalitarianism, shifts in power, laws, government, possibly like a big leader dying or something, which I mean, we've been kind of saying that for a little bit already, but and I've been saying a lot of this stuff for a while already, you guys, but just kind of bringing it up again, possible like civil war or wars in general, transformation of a country's systems, structures and foundations, civilizations. That is basically just some of like the general things we can see with the Pluto region turn. It's in Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. So these things can be slow moving. I'm not saying all that's going to happen on the first February 20th hit, but we can start seeing a lot of those things we, we've already been seeing like building, right? It would seem very possible for that to happen. Last but not least, I just wanted to go over some topics that I think some of the signs could experience, some signs more than others could experience the most based on this year's big transit. So I think the signs that will have the most growth via possibly some kind of challenge, not to say that this will be true for everybody. This is definitely general. You can get a personal reading if you would like to know more, but just in general, the, the signs that I think may feel a lot of the transits the most. Some signs, it may be great for them though. Um, so do keep that in mind. Thursday may find it a little bit challenging, but you still can grow a lot through these transits and deal with a lot of really amazing life changes. You can get unstuck, you can, you know, so it's not all bad. So I just, I wanna say that this doesn't mean it's all bad, but the signs that I think will grow the most via challenge are the fixed signs. Again, I said that last year as well. So. Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius because of Saturn and Uranus being in fixed signs and then also the eclipses slash nodes now being in fixed signs this year. The most growth via healing, luck or benefic energy I think will be Pisces and Aries. Uh, because of Jupiter moving into being in their signs this year. I think the signs that will be most focused on relationships, I'm gonna say this in order. So number one, Scorpio will definitely be the most focused because they will have the North Node in their seventh house in Taurus and Jupiter will be in their fifth house of Pisces for the first five months and the last couple months of the year. Number two will be Libra because Jupiter will be in its opposite sign of Aries from May to October and Saturn will still be in Libra's fifth house. So both relationships, relationship houses or love houses are being activated for Libra. And then number three is Taurus because the South Node will be moving through Taurus's seventh house. So it will be a time of really noticing shadow traits within relationships and what you may be attached to in toxic ways or what may need to be purged, healed, detoxed, or moved on from forgot to say, but these are going to resonate more for your rising sign, by the way. With that south node in your, your seventh house, it's definitely going to be a time of like letting go of like old relationships, old relationship dynamics. The focus is going to be more on you and what you want and your desires and what you want in your life. At number four is Virgo, and that's because Jupiter will be in their seventh house of Pisces from January to May. And then Venus is retrograding at the very beginning of the year in their fifth house for like the first couple months. So definitely bringing up a pretty big focus on relationships and your love life for especially the first part of the year, first few months of the year. Number five is Cancer. And that is because Venus is retrograding in the very beginning of the year in your seventh house and the south node will be in your fifth house for the whole year. So once again, pretty big relationship themes on and off all year, but especially probably like the first few months of the year. Number six is Sag, so Sagittarius, because Jupiter will be in Sag's fifth house of Aries from May to October, 2022. 
and then Mars will retrograde at the, the last few months of the year in Sag's seventh house of Gemini. And so that will definitely be a massive time of relationships. Um, so Sag will be kind of feeling relationship energy on and off all year. So uh, I think the signs that will be most focusing on career and professional life will be Gemini because Jupiter will be in their 10th house from January to May. So, and then also from October to December. So those time frames are gonna be really good if you're a Gemini rising to, you know, be doing shit in terms of career, like long-term goals, like life goals, what you want for your future. Like that is gonna be the time to like be doing shit in regards to like your future and where you wanna go. Capricorn as well, because Jupiter will be in their 10th house from May to October of 2022 in Aries. So it's gonna be a really expansive time if you're a Capricorn rising in career from that time in that time frame. Taurus, because Saturn will be in your 10th house again, it was in there all last year. So I'm sure career and life goals and life achievements were a really big focus for you or authority figures, reputation. That's gonna be continuing and Saturn does bring some hardship. And so you probably have been having some hardship or just some stress or a general sense of like heaviness or responsibility in that area. So that will continue this year. But Taurus has the North Node in their sign. So I do think that will help. Virgo uh, towards the end of the year will be focused on career with Mars retrograding in their 10th house. So the last few months of the year are gonna be pretty big for Virgo. It may be like a a questioning of your career or kind of like a change in career in some big way. And then Aries will be focused on career at the very beginning of the year with Venus retrograding Capricorn and Mercury retrograding back into Capricorn. So this will be more the first few months here in 2022 for Aries where career is kind of like a big focus. So oh, finances are Aquarius because Aquarius has Jupiter in the second from June till May. Um, and then October to December. So those are gonna be pretty big time periods for money for Aquarius. Leo, because Leo has Jupiter in the eighth from January to May and October to end October till December as well. But it'll be in your eighth house, so it'll be more so gaining money from others or unexpected kind of inheritances or like just luck with like money coming in, especially if you own a business. It's gonna be really good with Leo if you offer like services or an exchange of resources or money. This can be really good for Leo. And just really getting kind of smart about where you wanna take your money and your finances, what you wanna invest in. Pisces um, as well, finance can be a really big deal from May to October with Jupiter in the second, where you can get a lot of like luck or expansion in terms of your finances, wealth, etc. Also Virgo will have Jupiter in the eighth um, from May to October, where there may be an expansion in what you receive or what's owed to you from others financially or with resources. And Cancer as well. So Cancer um, will have Saturn in their eighth again, which can be kind of like financial responsibilities, getting really serious about money and finances and wealth and assets and what you're investing in and stuff like that. Capricorn will have Saturn in the second, so also getting serious about money and finances and assets. Taurus will have Mars retrograde the last few months of the year in their second, so that will be a pretty big time of changes in money and finances. Last but not least, Scorpio will have Mars retrograde in their eighth house the last few months of the year, which will be definitely bringing up other people's money, what's owed to you, what you owe, stuff like that and changes there at the very end of the years. Anyway, so those are just some things I wanted to name off, some categories that I wanted to say that I thought were interesting of different signs that could have different focuses. I know that I may have not went over or named every sign and if not, then likely just take it as a good thing that maybe your sign's not getting hit like <laughs> the hardest and you know, it may not be also getting like super benefic energy either, but honestly, Transits can play out anyway. It's hard to say. It's And like I said, and before I started naming all those, it's not to say that if you're that rising sign that it's for sure gonna play out that way for you. It changes depending on your own chart. So do keep that in mind. But if your rising sign wasn't mentioned, then not to say that you won't grow or that you won't get, you know, benefic things coming your way, but it just isn't one of the big signs that I see a focus on with some of the bigger transits this year. So. Anyways, but that is it for this 2022 collective predictions video. 
definitely let me know down below if you made it this far if you watched this whole video like thank you so so much if you did i would comment down below if you did and let me know if you stayed all the way through and let me know what you think about 2022 and how you think it sounds if you think it sounds better than 2021 i definitely I'm a little bit more excited for this year than I was last year. Um, just knowing the transits now, I could be wrong on some things. Um, I'm sure I will be. These are just kind of my predictions and what I see coming personally with how they've happened in history and just intuitive insights and stuff like that. So, but I'd love to know what you guys think down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in my other videos.